Here's how you can create this studio-like dramatic black and white effect here in Photoshop. So with our image here in Photoshop, the only prerequisite is that we have some highlights and shadows in our photo because we're gonna use those highlights to blend in with a dark background. The first step is that we want to turn this colored photo into black and white directly on that image layer. Just by going up to image, adjustments, and then desaturate while that image layer is selected in the layers panel. Now I need to create our background color, which is black. So going to the adjustments icon, I'll go to solid color and then set the color to black, click OK. And to place this color fill behind the subject, I'll click and drag it to the bottom of the layer stack. Now I want to tell Photoshop that any of the darker shadows and darker midtones within this photo, I want those to basically blend into invisibility into this black background layer. With the help of Blend If, this is super simple. So I'll just double click on this image layer to access the layer styles. And then within the blending options, we'll go to Blend If, and we want to affect the current layer. So that's the slider that we're going to edit. Since I want to hide some of the shadows, that means we want to edit the shadows point of the current layer slider. And if I click and drag this over, you'll notice that it makes parts of the image transparent based on those darker exposure ranges. But if I just go and move that slider by itself, the result looks super rough. So to blend things in, we just need to hold Alt or Option and click outside of that little point here and that's going to separate it. Anywhere between these two points is going to be the feather transition for our effect. So if I move this one over and then bring the secondary point over even further, we can softly blend our shadows of our current layer, which is the image, into the background, which is the black color fill layer. So this starts to set the stage for our effect. You can play around with this until you're happy with the result. There is no right or wrong. It will just depend on the exposure ranges in your photo. Once you're done, just click OK. And in this case, I have a little bit of extra left over that I want to remove. So to quickly solve that, I'll go to my contextual taskbar while the image layer is selected and click on select subject. And with this selection active, it doesn't need to be perfect, especially because there's already so much of our subject that's transparent. We can just add a layer mask onto it like so. And now that's going to blend nicely into our black background. Now at this point, the effect is coming together, but we can really enhance it using some contrast on a few different curves adjustment layers. To begin, I'll go and create a new curves adjustment layer at the top of the layer stack, and I'll just increase the highlights a little bit and then play around with the shadows to find something that works in the image. You can even soften the shadows by bringing up the black point if you're interested. But since we don't want to affect the entire photo, we can just add a clipping mask by clicking this icon right here so that our curves adjustment only affects the image layer. So this way you can refine the contrast of just your subject, even if you wanna add some matte contrast. With this general contrast created, I now want to go through and add some selective contrast so that I can make some shadows a lot darker and some highlights a lot brighter. So once again, I'll create a new curves adjustment layer at the top of the layer stack. I'll call this one to darkening, and then I'll click on the black point of that darkening curves adjustment layer and bring it in like so to darken the photo, and then go to the white point and drag down a little bit to darken the highlights of this particular adjustment. Now I want to selectively paint everything back into view. So I'll click on this layer mask of the darkening curves adjustment layer, press command or control I to invert it and therefore make it completely invisible. It's not affecting anything on our canvas now. And by activating the brush tool by pressing B using a soft round brush and you can set the opacity to something lower if you want to softly blend this effect into your photo. So I'll set the opacity to 50% and then then with white set to our foreground color, so we're adding visibility onto our darkening curves layer mask. While that layer mask is selected, we can just go and paint over anywhere that we want to add more darkening to. You can scale your brush up and down using your bracket keys and adjust your brush opacity if you find that this effect looks too intense in certain areas. So I'm just going to go and paint over the shadows in areas I would like to be a bit darker, and I'll meet you when it is all complete. 
With your darkening adjustments complete, turning that on and off, it just darkens around the edges of the subject. But next we can do some brightening to add a bit more life into the photo. So repeating a similar process, creating a new curves adjustment layer, but this time I want to change the white point to be a little bit brighter. So we're adding brightness to the photo. And then for the contrast, we can choose to add more or less contrast, depending on what you're into. I'm going to drag up that black point just a little bit to lessen the contrast. Now I want to selectively paint everything back. So once again, I'm going to click on that layer mask, press Command or Control I to invert it. So now nothing is visible on this adjustment and I'll rename this to brightening. And with the same brush settings as before, painting white onto this brightening curves adjustment layer mask, we can just go and selectively brighten some areas around our photo to add some life back into the contrast here. Now with those brightening adjustments complete, it just adds a little extra contrast in there. So turning these adjustments on and off just makes the photo look a bit more dramatic. But if you feel like you've maybe removed a little too much of your subject, we can go back to our image layer, double click on it to access the blending options and the blend if sliders and we can just update our blend if sliders as needed to bring back some information from our subject to refine the result. I'll click OK. So now what we're left with is this dramatic black and white studio like portrait that was created from just a regular photo using the highlights and shadows to blend into a black background layer. So looking at the before and the after, just using blend if the desaturate adjustment and a handful of selective contrast adjustments, we could really transform this photo into something more unique that you could use as a headshot or for like a memory type photo or whatever you're into. So this is a fun effect that you can try the next time you want a dramatic black and white portrait in Photoshop. Now, some of the steps that we covered here to create this effect feel a little bit confusing. I created a free PDF lesson cheat sheet that you can download in the description below. It's totally free and it covers all of the steps that we talked about here in one nice little PDF. So you can reference it the next time you want to create this effect for yourself. Again, that is available for free in the description below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.